I almost said happy vlogmas. <laughs> oh, not it. Happy Corona vlog. <laughs> or not. Not happy. It is Corona vlog. This is number 11. March 31st. Well, it is dreary and it's going to be rainy. I'm not sure if that qualifies as going out like a lion. Not exactly a lion, but not exactly a lamb. And I am forget the significance of that. I think it has to do with how March is going to be. If it comes in like a lion, it'll go out like a lamb and vice versa. I'm not sure. Tuesday. So I did not vacuum. Not, will not be a shock to anyone who knows me or has watched my podcast. <laughs> but I did exercise. A little not a lot but a little bit I like you know I realized I'd been sitting too much I was worried because my butt hurts at night when I go to bed because I'm well, sitting so much so I did some exercise and it and my butt didn't hurt when I went to bed so I'm gonna have to do that every day at least I mean it was only fire hydrants but I did three reps and they're they're my least favorite exercise we did do did at the gym. I really like the machines that you do. I love the machines. Fire hydrants, not not so much. But I did them last night because of course that's what you can do at home. There's another exercise I do with one of those giant rubber bands on my legs because the machine hurt my knee when I tried to use the machine that was that exercise so she gave me a different one and I have I have those rubber bands and those hand weights which I took upstairs so I conveniently don't have to look at them anymore oh hand lotions back <laughs> anyway I had a frustrating day with my video yesterday my machine that I use to edit these and I don't do a lot of edit I edited I edited yesterday because I did a whole, I did my normal thing and then it was terrible and I couldn't use it. And then, so I did another one, but when I did the other one, I forgot to talk about the sweater I was wearing, so I had to edit them together, which I don't typically do. I mean, I really don't edit much these, but you gotta get them up and you've gotta get them rendered so that they're in the right format and then upload them to YouTube. And the process of that took all day. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not like sitting there all day. I'm just like going back. Is it done yet? Ah, my machine crashed. I got to start over. Da, 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 da. Which is absolutely no excuse for not vacuuming. <laughs> you can definitely vacuum in between what renderings and everything else. So, But um, we did make the lasagna. And that turned out to be really good. And it was really good, just like lasagna. It's a little higher carb than we normally eat because the tomato sauce, tomatoes have carbs. Um, but it was really good. And we put some in the freezer to give to Dennis's mom because she's going to love it. I'm ratting her out on the internet. But she called yesterday. We forgot to call her. We forgot to call her, so she called us, which was good. And then she confessed that she went to the store the other day. She said, but I wore my gloves. Da, 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 da. We gave her a box of gloves um, when she was here on Thursday, and we took her stuff back anyway. So she went to the store, and she was telling us about the store. I said, Aura, every, every time we talk to you, we ask you if you need anything. You tell, do you tell us no? She says, yeah, because I didn't want you to yell at me. I am, you know, I said, okay, I won't yell at you. I'm sorry about the yelling part, but please let us know if you need anything. Because <laughs> I tend to do that. But she knows me really well. I've been her daughter-in-law for coming up on 28 years now. So she knows, <laughs> she knows I'll yell at her. I guess she didn't want to hear it. No, I don't blame her. She's an adult woman. So I, well, I yelled at her like I always do. Aura! I said, that. I did do that. <laughs> anyway, she's outed now on the internet. You're out it, Aura. She doesn't watch these. 
I had, an, I had a lovely phone call yesterday from um, our friend Kay. When I married Dennis, I acquired a lot of things in my life and people. And Ben and Kay are the some of the best acquisitions <laughs> of my life. They are just the loveliest people. They're the people who live on Long Island. I might have mentioned them. Um, just really, really wonderful people. And they were roommates with Dennis in college. And, you know, so he's had them in his life for a long time. And so they are so wonderful. But anyway, in fact, we talked to them last week, like Tuesday or Wednesday, you know. We don't talk a lot. You know, I said this earlier, if I, you know, if the, if the if a friendship with you requires a lot of phone calls and stuff, that friendship has probably gone by the wayside because I just don't do that. So anyway, she called me yesterday and said she had just watched the first one of my Corona vlogs and I was sad and she wanted to call and make sure I was okay, which was so sweet. Of course, I had talked to her since I did that video, so I think she kind of knew, but it, it was just the sweetest thing. So we had a, another conversation. You know, you don't have to wait in a, another four or five months to talk to people that you love. Anyway, it was just the sweetest thing. She said, oh, oh I just saw your first vlog and you sing sad. So I thought I'd call you. <laughs> I said I was sad. But the doing the vlogs is helping me. And, you know, some of you have said that they're helping you too. So I'm really glad. But that was such a sweet phone call from her. They need to take care of themselves too. Oh, and I wanted to thank Linda, maybe on, ra on Ravelry. Thank you, Linda. She sent me a pattern for when I'm ready to stop knitting sweaters and want to just bang out something useful. She sent me, I wrote it down, spring cloths from Chris Knits, a pattern on Ravelry. It was really sweet of her, so I can make some washcloths. Um, and I need, I need... Uh, another washcloth I made or two at least I use them on my face and uh, I only have one <laughs> that I made I made a washcloth years and years ago and it's the one I use I use it all the time so I could use some more for sure so so thank you Linda that was so sweet so kind she's very generous and uh, and I just wanted to say thank you I appreciate it and I appreciate your comments. I really, I really do in reaching out. We're not alone. We're out there alone together. That's the weird thing, you know. It's just so mind-blowing to me that when you think about the world, everybody in the world, every single person in the world who isn't in a critical job has been told to go home, be home, stay home. Don't go, don't go out. Everybody in the world. Isn't that weird to think about? It is for me. Anyway. So Joanne asked, said I should wear a different sweater every day and tell the story of the sweater. Um, I would love for that to work out. I would love that we are only under shutdown as long, as long as I have sweaters to show because I will run out of sweaters long before the lockout, I think. I hope. Oh, I hope not. I was going to say I hope so, but no, I hope not. I hope, the, you know, everything is safe by, before I run out of sweaters. But meanwhile, I do have a few sweaters. So this is one of my favorite sweaters. This is my Malin sweater by Isabel Kramer. You will notice a theme here. I'm a big Isabel Kramer pattern fan. I just, well, you know, she just is so adorable and she models her sweaters. And so all her sweaters look fabulous. Although she didn't model the Karina sweater that I can't get to look like the picture. But anyway, so this is the Malin sweater. And it's got this lovely motif that goes down, down the front. And this is the sweater I wear when I know I'm going to be chilly. So this may be the last day I can wear this sweater this year because it is um, going to be high in the 40s and damp because it's a rainy day. Did I tell you that the weather is rainy? Not, not lovely. So anyway, this may be the last time I get to wear this sweater, but it's just, uh, 
wonderful, warm. This is like my, when I want to be warm, this is the sweater I wear. And um, the only modification I made to it, her neckline comes like down and then like straight across. So you can see, I have a lot. Of, I, I picked up the stitches of that neckline, like six stitches down. And then I, so I rounded this in the front. You can see I just picked up the stitches and then I got towards the front and I didn't pick up, you can see how square it would be. Maybe you can't see how square it would be. If I just picked up the stitches right on the edge of that, it's so that, because this motif is right in the middle and it's like squared off. And so, I mean, I, I didn't round it a lot, but I, I, I like it much better than the way she had it in the pattern. So FYI, <laughs> it's easy to round it. Um, I have no idea if I knit this to normal or not. Now it's, um, I've got much more positive ease on it now than I did when I knit it. I, you know, so it was much more fitted at the time I, I made it, but it fits me beautifully still, just differently. And I'm really happy about that because it is one of my favorite sweaters. This yarn is Harrisville Designs yarn. I got this yarn I think it's like Highland base or something like this. I got this yarn at Rhinebeck about three years ago in the sale bin. So the yarn, it on, and it came on cones. And so the yarn for this sweater, I think costs like $20 in this sale bin. And I got the gray and I got kind of a maroony color too. And, um, so it was coming up on the next year in Rhinebeck, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to go to Harrisville Designs and see if I can get more of that sweat, that, you know, yarn. It's really, you know, if it's on sale like that, it's really well-priced, which, of course, it was well-priced. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, you know, you didn't ever knit with that other yarn. You should knit something with that yarn to see if you really want more of that, <laughs> more of it. <laughs> so I made this sweater. Now you can see I'm wearing turtleneck. I got sleeves coming out my arm, out my sleeves here. That's because I cannot wear this next to my skin ever in a million years. It is very rustic and I, you know, but it's also really, really warm. So there's, you know, anytime I'm gonna wear this sweater, having a turtleneck or a shirt underneath of it is not a problem. And so, anyway, they didn't have this same yarn in their sale bin. And so that was kind of a moot point, but I do have enough to make another sweater. And in fact, I might have more of the the maroon color, they came on cones and so I don't know how much is on a cone. I think I used almost two cones for this or maybe it was less than one cone. I guess I'm not remembering. But anyway, it's the only yarn I've ever knit from a cone, used from a cone, cone, cone. So it had a lot of, a lot of yarn on it. But anyway, this is my Malin sweater, M-A-L-I-N. Since I'm not editing, I'm not putting it under anything. If I remember, I'll put it down in the description. <clears throat> well, thank you, Joanne, for that suggestion, and I will I will do that. I have was looking for some of my summer sweaters, and I couldn't find them, so that's going to be an adventure to try to find all my sweaters, and it'll be good for me to find all my sweaters. I need to clear clear off that bench that has all my tops on it, but they're mostly winter tops. My summer tops are in the in my craft room in that dresser. But when I go through, when I go through and take out my summer clothes, most of them are going to go to my mother-in-law for her to try on. Um, and you take whatever fits her now because she's, uh, you know, her body is changing too. And so some of them might fit her, some of them are gonna be too big for her too. And then off to Goodwill when we can do that again. <laughs> and then I'll go through my winter stuff. Uh, I haven't worn lots of it because, you know, I just don't go out very much. Even when I wasn't in lockdown, I wasn't going out very much. So, 
You don't need quite as many clothes if, you know, you're not going out much. My typical, and I've said this on my podcast, my typical retirement schedule or regimen would be like if I were going out for somewhere except to get my hair cut. My hair cut, I put crummy clothes on, you know, kind of a crummy shirt because I get dye and every once in a while there's an accident. So I don't wear anything nice to get my hair done. But otherwise, you know, I pick an outfit and, you know, I go out, I'm out for an hour or two hours. I come back, I put, you know, I lay that outfit on my chair in my bedroom because that's as you do. And, you know, the next day or two days later when I'm going out again, I pick the same outfit. So I pick an outfit, so I, an outfit for the week. So when you only need 50 outfits, you can make a, 50 outfits out of very few pieces of clothing, let me tell you. I mean, you can watch some of those styling videos and they're making 50 outfits out of, you know, 12 pieces. So you, that's not very many. And, I, and you know, so I have been doing some secondhand shopping too. So I'm ready. I'm ready to be able to go out again when the world lets me. When the coronavirus has run its course, however that's going to look. So I did watch too much news yesterday, but... But I exercised, so that offset it a little bit, I think. I didn't do any reading. But this is the first time I get to check off exercise, so I'm very happy about that. And we're just, we're just keeping on. We did some normal life thing yesterday. We picked up our car <laughs> from the from the garage, but of course I had gloves on and you know, I think, I don't, I'm not sure they had, I think the two brothers who own the garage are the only ones that were working there. And I, and in fact, I don't even know what they did to the car because he tried to give me the receipt and I said, ah, never mind. You know, I'm just going to have to dispose of it anyway. So, you know, I'm with my blue gloves on and you know, he, he had gloves on. He, yeah, okay. So I, I actually, in the end, didn't see what they did but it was a very reasonable price and these are guys who Dennis has been using for 35 years and so he trusts them and I trust them and they're excellent and anyway but that felt like a real life thing we were out driving we were driving but we could go for a drive if we wanted to and, and we might we might think about trying to do that maybe just find a dog walking trail somewhere else we've never been and so we can get a change of scenery. I wonder if that will count in the dog's minds as a walk if they don't go on their regular place. It might not. You don't never know how they feel. But we're very grateful to have the dogs, I have to say. And I'm very grateful to have you guys. I'm not going to make any predictions for today. Oh, I did get past the um, yoke increases, barely past the, just finished that. So I will just be knitting for a little while. And it said go eight and a half, for my size, eight and three quarters from the back neck. And I think that's when, you know, you close off the sleeves and then you just do back and forth the body. And when I finish the yoke increases, it's almost eight and three quarters, so. It's only going to be a couple rows, and then I think then the then then the, we'll, I'll have armholes and go down from there. This is a crop sweater. I have to think about. I should think about how long I want it to be because it does have a a lace motif at the bottom. So you knit down to like three inches above where you want the sweater to end, and then they have a lace motif. So I'm getting ready for a lace motif, kids. Maybe I'm going to be a knitter again and not just a stockinette zombie. You've heard that before. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's on the horizon today because I do want to make some progress on that. And otherwise, I'm making no predictions. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for your support and your comments. And please, please stay safe and stay sane. I'll talk to you tomorrow.